Hey everyone, welcome to Math for the Impatient. We're doing another episode. I'm here with Sam Podco, CTO of Scale. And on today's episode, we are going to talk about automated market makers. Um, it's a really hot topic in DeFi. Stan, um, could you just tell us a little bit, like what is an automated market maker and you know, why are they needed? How do they work? Kind of some of the basics around it. Yeah, Marcus, that's really a fascinating subject. And hopefully today we'll cover some of the kind of secrets about market, market makers. Like I have a friend, many friends of mine that ask me questions like, why don't you use a market maker like to make money, like Uniswap or SushiSwap or some other market makers. And when they ask me about market makers, I tell them that actually I actually don't do any like money making or uh, using market makers, using liquidity, because there's actually a risk involved. You can actually lose your money. And this is something that we're going to discuss today, the risks and the potential benefits of using market makers. So in particular, number one, market makers is something that existed actually for a long, long time, long before computers. Let's first start with a super simple example that will let you understand what a market maker is. Let's say you have a village, and in this village, there are people that grow apples and people that grow oranges. And let's say there's a marketplace. So people that grow apples go sell oranges and get, uh, sell apples and get oranges. And the other way, you know, you, let's say I grow oranges, I go to the marketplace, I sell my oranges and I get apples. Unless for simplicity, presume that the price of one orange is equal to the price of one apple. So basically I bring my apple and as a guy brings orange, I give the guy the apple and the guy gives me the orange. And it's a very simple exchange. And that's how actually things existed like many, many years ago. Now, the problem is that if the village is large, then there will be always people in the marketplace. So you go, you have your apple, you find a guy with orange, you exchange and you feel great. But if the village is small, then what's going to happen is that when you go there to the marketplace with your orange, there will be no guy with the apple. And another way, when the guy with the, that's so you leave. And then when the guy comes with, that has an apple, this guy will not find the guy with orange. So there's a problem that people don't meet each other because the market, and it's something which is called an illiquid market. And then here's this idea comes of a market maker. It's very simple. You, you actually hire a guy and you actually let this guy stay at the marketplace all the time. And the guy will have some reserve of apples and some reserve of oranges. So when you come with an orange, you give the, the orange to the guy, the guy gives you an apple and vice versa. But what's also important that the guy will always take a small cut of the apple and all the orange and be happy. That's pretty much the idea of a market maker. That's why it's called a market maker. It's someone who makes a market. Someone who makes a market means someone that, that actually transforms the market from illiquid to liquid. So now you can sell apples, you can sell oranges. And that's the purpose of the market maker. And on places like exchanges like NASDAQ or New York Stock Exchange, market makers are very important part of a liquid market. These are entities that actually always buy and always sell securities. And in return for that, they get a small cut. So the idea of a market maker actually didn't change much from many, many years ago. And uh, also on the blockchain, there are market makers. Very cool. So um, maybe I think we could dive in a little bit into um, you know automated market makers and more specifically um, folks like Uniswap, um, you know SushiSwap, One Inch, all these guys that have their kind of automated market makers. And I will I will also caveat this by saying this is not financial advice. We're just talking about um, really interesting ideas and concepts and trying to help people understand them. So please go out and do your research. Anyway, talking about folks like Uniswap, et cetera, how can you make money by becoming a Uniswap liquidity provider? You know, what are the, what are the types of risks that are involved in, in becoming a liquidity provider? Yeah, that's a great question, Marcus. And you know, let's first understand, try to understand the risk. 
right? So let's again take this example that we had before. The village, uh, apples, oranges, one apple costs exactly, if the price of an apple is exactly equal to the price of an orange, people come exchange apples for oranges. The guy, the market maker stays there all the time at the marketplace and always takes the cut. So it looks like the guy has this perfect position. But the problem is, let's say the price fluctuates. Let's say there's a particular huge number of suddenly apples on the market. Maybe, you know, it's a great summer, there's lots of apples. So let's say now the apples actually, for one, uh, for two apples, you get an orange. Then what's gonna happen because the guy doesn't know about this, of the, doesn't know about the price change. The guy still sells one-to-one. -one, and if people, smart people find out that now for two or two apples, you get one orange, they will actually go to run to this guy. And what they will do, they will uh, use the price difference. So they will basically buy all of the oranges at one orange and apple. And so the guy will actually run out of oranges really fast. And the guy will also get a loss because the guy will be selling the oranges at a price which is not equal to the market price. The price will be below the, the market price. price. So the, the risk that the market maker always takes because the market make, maker always buys and sells, the risk of the market maker is that if the market maker does not know the exact price, and if the, if the the price of the market maker changes and fluctuates as compared as compared to the real price, other people can actually take advantage of this, and actually then the market maker can lose lots of money, as in the example we just seen. And let's just you know take an example of of a more real situation. Let's say you have two stable currencies. You have USDT and USDC. Both of these currencies, you know, cost one US dollar and you can be a market maker on Uniswap that puts USDT and USDC and takes some cut and the fee and you, you feel happy. But then let's suppose that one morning you wake up and you find out that say USDT, the price of USDT is now zero because it was uncovered that a particular problem existed with reserves or whatever. So like, let's, let's, let, let's suppose that USDT actually crashed to zero, the price. Then because your money, both your USDT and USDC are in this, this market maker, you will actually lose all of your money. In this example, basically will people will use the fact that you will still be changing one-to-one -one and the price will be essentially, of USDT will be essentially zero. People will actually use this fact to actually make money and you will lose money. So when, every time you, you deposit money with the market maker, you run a risk that you will lose money because of the price difference, because the market maker may not correctly understand the price. And you know when markets are doing well and stable, some you don't feel it because the price doesn't change so much. But if you put money into Uniswap and price grossly fluctuates, at these times you can lose lots of money. So if you can, if you want to make money on Uniswap and you can you want to, uh, to provide liquidity, you need to understand that yes, you will make the, this fee but you will also run the risk of losing all of your money. And I think many people don't understand this because when times are good, they're just taking the cut and they don't actually feel this risk. So that's an important thing. Now let's go back to the actual automated market maker. What is an automated market maker? Why is it called an automated market maker? Well, in long, long time ago, the market maker was just a human, right? The guy who actually sells oranges and apples on the marketplace, it could be just a guy. And when the guy sees that, you know, people are buying, say, oranges, and he's starting to run out of oranges, the guy may, may actually raise the price. So there may be some formula in the head of this human that, you know, when, when you are selling things on, on the market and you see people buying all of your oranges, you're starting to increase price of the oranges. That's actually very natural. 
So what, what automated market makers on blockchain do, they try to mimic the, the human, the human idea that if people buying your things and you're running out of those things, the price needs to rise. So this is usually a formula in the market maker, in the solidity code on the blockchain. You know, if you put a pair of cryptocurrencies and you're starting to run out of one of those cryptocurrencies, you're starting to increase the price of this cryptocurrency, very much like a human would do. But the formula is usually very simple. And so the formula is also known for, to everyone. So, so you actually, people know the formula, people know that you are putting the money, people know that you will be making some uh, fee. There's a fee connected to the market maker. So all these things are known on, on the blockchain. And as I already mentioned, uh, when uh, uh, you actually put money on the blockchain, all smart people know about this, they know the formula, and they're trying to actually make money and to make you lose money. So there are risks associated with market makers, and there are also gains when, when, you, do, when you participate in this token exchange. So the best is actually to participate in market makers only if you understand the risk and you understand the potential gains. And it's also super important to understand that when you do a market make, making and when you use Uniswap, say, if the two currencies are relatively stable, they, they don't fluctuate much, then you, you can get the reward of, of getting the fee and you don't, you don't have much risk. But if you provide a pair of two cryptocurrencies which can fluctuate much or potentially crash, that's when you can actually risk losing all of your money. So doing market maker, making for more or less stable currencies is much safer than doing market making for say two tokens which are known and have fluctuating prices. But usually you also make more money because usually the fee may be larger. So the, I think the, what you need to understand from this is that first of all, if you want to make money by providing liquidity to market makers, you need to understand the mathematical formulas and it's always best to start with a pairs of currencies which don't fluctuate much. For instance, you could, you could do things like USDT versus USDC, or maybe Bitcoin versus Ethereum, some well-known currencies, and you may potentially make less money, but then you are taking less risk, less risk. while if you're going for higher return, then you also need to understand that this high return may come with risk of you losing money because of these huge price fluctuations that unknown tokens may, may have. Cool, very cool. So, I mean, essentially, I'll reiterate, this is not financial advice. Um, we're just going through some of the understanding of what exactly a, a, an automated marker, mar uh, market maker is and, and what it really means for you in terms of um, risk and reward. This is all just very basic stuff. We encourage you guys to go out and, and read some more about it. Um, I'm going to bring this a little bit more to home because obviously we're a scale podcast. Um, what are some of the advantages that scale brings to the process of automated market making? That's a great question, uh, Marcus. First of all, one thing that everyone needs to understand is that with all of the downsides and risks, automated market makers are incredibly great things because after the invention of these automated market makers, people are able at any time to exchange any crypto token for any other crypto token. You can go to Uniswap and you have a token X and you want to exchange it into token Y and there, there, there will be no other people. You will be just interacting with the smart contract on the blockchain and you'll be able to exchange your token. So market makers have this huge feature that liquidity is available anytime, any moment you can take your tokens on exchange. So they provide huge, huge usability to people by creating this liquidity of different tokens. On the other hand, as we discussed, all the mathematics for market makers is quite complicated. And in particular, there are some smart people that are trying to make money from exploiting some of the weaknesses of the market makers. And the weaknesses come from the publicly known formulas. You know, when you go and you exchange your token, the formulas that market makers run are known to everyone. And when, when you submit your transaction, 
people that see this transaction in the pending queue, they will try to exploit the system in particular to insert transactions in front of your transaction to actually take a cut of your money. And we had a separate, uh, separate small discussion of uh, front running and uh, uh, money, uh, minimum extractable value. Uh, and I refer people to this as a discussion we have had, but in reality, you know, on, a, on, on Uniswap, when you submit a transaction, there are people that exploit this and they, they, they take cut of your, of your tokens. Essentially, you're buying tokens, not at the price of the market per maker, but at the price that people will manipulate just before your transaction goes to the blockchain. So you, your transaction is submitted, you've been waiting. At this moment, people know about this. They manipulate the price. The price becomes higher. You pay more, and they take some cut of it. So that's how the front running works. On scale, we have this great feature, which is called threshold encryption, which allows you to encrypt transactions when you submit them to blockchain. And I'm happy to report that making, we are making great progress on this on this feature, we are, have just been able to do the threshold encryption in the browser, which no one ever was able to do before. So we now have a full implementation of threshold encryption that runs in any browser. It can run in Chrome, runs in Explorer, runs in Safari. So in any browser, you, can, you will be able to use the threshold encryption together with MetaMask to submit your transactions to blockchain in encrypted way. And guess what? Because the transactions will be encrypted, people won't be able to exploit. And so you'll get the price, the real price, not the manipulated price, but the real price. And this price will be substantially lower. So I can estimate that you will be able to get one or even more than 1% better price on Uniswap and other market makers just from scale uh, being able to eliminate the front running. So this great feature. Threshold encryption. We are making great, great progress on it. We just uh, completed this huge thing of running it in the browser, trans in the browser now. We are now kind of polishing it, and it is going to be ready really, really soon. Hopefully, we have our engineers working on it, on it really hard. And once we have the threshold encryption, hopefully, we won't only have market makers, but we also have market makers that are immune to front running and MEV. Very cool. Yeah. So once again, I'm going to remind everyone, this is not financial advice. Um, we are just going through and describing different types of um, technologies and specifically today talking about automated market makers. Um, and actually one of the concepts, you know, that, that kind of gets brought into this is arbitrage, right? So making, making money off of price differentials on different platforms um, and how scale can help with that. Uh, if you want to learn more about scale, we're on Twitter at Scale Network. There's also our Telegram channel. Just look below. Feel free to post a comment. And this is the latest episode. Thanks, Dan.